Hey guys, in this video I will talk about VTTCs, why you should build one and how you can design your own VTTC. So first of all, let's start with why you should build a VTTC in the first place. So VTTCs are extremely strong. It's extremely hard to kill such a vacuum tube and even the GU50 which is rated for 50 watts, can handle a lot more power than it says in the datasheet. Of course, not for a long duration, but for a VTTC operation or pulse operation, that's completely fine. If you compare that to a classic IGBT brick, this one will basically just explode if you do something wrong. If you use this in a DRSSTC, and something is wrong, it will basically just blow up. So, um, yeah, that's not as strong as such an old tube. The second point is that VTTCs give you a pretty big output considering the very simple schematic. VTTCs can also get complicated if you want to make a good one, but still they give you a pretty big output, um, almost or pretty much as good as in QCV if you do it right. Um, VTTCs can make such a big output because they use in ramp like in a QCV DRSTC. So basically the VTTC uses the main ramp of the sine wave and shifting that sine wave up with a voltage diver to get an even longer ramp. But well, now we are getting into the explanation, so I will show the schematic of a VTTC. So this is a simplified schematic of a VTTC. Right here, we have our B plus supply. So most of the time, this will be a mod or multiple mods. Then we have our voltage doubler right here. And this voltage doubler shifts up the sine wave and then we get a longer ramp right here we have our primary and tank cap then right here we have the tube itself and this is our grid drive circuit so basically this is where the coil gets its feedback from and vttc can work without the secondary and that's because and voltage gets induced into the primary because there's no voltage on the grid first so there is going to be voltage on the primary it's building up an electric and magnetic field then also a voltage gets induced into the grid so into the feedback coil this is going to switch off the grid and if the grid is switched off your primary is also going to switch off and then the feedback will be switched on again because there can't be voltage here anymore. And yeah, then it just oscillates. So then we will just place a secondary right here. And well, then we have nice sparks. So that's basically it from the function of this coil. It's, it's very simple, but please note that this is a simplified version. There are still a few more components, for example, an RF trap right here or an RF bypass cap on your diodes and it's not as simple as this. So how do we make our own VTTC? So first of all, it makes sense to see what components do you have. So look around in your lab and see what you have. For example, I have this tube right here or this big pulse tube right here, but this will be too big for beginner VTTC so let's go right here and look here so I have a few tubes and well let's start to look around um, I would say the GU81 is always a good choice but also tubes like wait tubes like the GU50 are fine or well you can go a bit bigger this is a bit rarer tube, but it will also work fine. So now that you've chose 
your tubes how we can yeah choose all the other components so before we can start to choose the other components let's start to look into the data sheet of the tube in my case i will use the gu81m as an example so yeah let's start so here we can see the tube is in pentor here we can see all the connections so then we know how to connect the tube then we move on and well now we can see for example one of the most important things is to know your filament voltage so we know this tube needs 12.6 volts at around 11 amps at most so now you need to think of a filament transformer what can you use i would recommend a rewound mod but in toroid transformer something would also work pretty much fine um and mod will overheat over time because they are made like a piece of shit so yeah then we move on to the output so this tube can output at least 700 watts um, which is yeah, pretty good for a small size VTTC I would say. Then this is a very very important um, number. So the anode voltage at frequencies not above 600 megahertz. This is our case because our VTTC or if you build a VTTC you want to run between 400 to 600 kilohertz not above 3 kilovolts so oh i noticed that there's a small mistake in the data sheet obviously not volt not 3 volts but 3 kilovolts so um yeah note that and well that's basically it we don't really need to know anything else there are also grid drive values here but for the gu81 i would use a 150 watt feedback um, lamp so let's start to choose our power supply so for a power supply i would recommend mods so we are still i'm planning to build a gu81 vttc and we've seen a maximum anode voltage of 3 kilovolts so we are also going to use a doubler so we want one mod or well that's what you might think but actually you can use two mods with a doubler for the gu81 and i will explain that no. So why do I say you can use two mods with a doubler with the GU81 if the maximum anode voltage is three kilovolts? Um, yes, it might be right that the tube will run on more than double the voltage than it says in the data sheet. And yes, it might be bad for the tube, but in VTTC we will run in pulsed operation also soviet tubes are really 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 strong it's very hard to kill them especially the bigger tubes like this or this so it's very hard to kill them but with german tubes like this i wouldn't be so sure um because well I've never tested it, but I wouldn't really go more than double on a German tube, but it will be fine for Soviet tubes. Um, I don't see a problem there. Um, also, a few people are running these tubes at higher voltage, um, especially me, I did it. Um, my friend Steve from Tested Destruction did it and got a very big ratio. It's really your thing, um, you need to decide, but... I say there will be no problem running this tube on more than the double recommended voltage 
Um, I, I just think there's no problem with that. And um, yeah, I mean, it's your decision at the end. So how do we choose a tank capacitor? The tank cap should always be in ceramic cap. As you guys can see, I have a few here. And how can I choose a good one? Well, I can just say this Soviet doorknob caps are the best choice you can make on a VTTC. And that's because these caps are so strong, they are very hard to kill. Um, I had a few direct flashovers onto the caps and really they are very hard to break. Um, so I would definitely recommend these. They are 470 picofarad, so in an VTTC you will need probably around 2 to 3 caps in parallel, but not more than that. So definitely 2 or 3, but really not more or less. Um, on your primary, you want to have about 40 to 30 turns. So this is the golden ratio. And with tubes not above one kilowatt, a kilowatt output power, um, your primary should be 100 millimeters diameter. And above that, I would go 125 millimeters diameter. And um, yeah, that should work pretty good. Um, so we only have a couple of things left. For example, well, the feedback lamp, but um, I would recommend to just go and see other coils or other people that build coils with your tube and see what values they use. Or just look and go into the data sheet. But for the GU81, um, you want to be at around um, yeah, 150 watts. So you want a 150 watt uh, feedback lamp and that will work perfectly. So yeah, that's basically it. I mean, obviously there are a lot more things to in VTTC and for a very detailed video, I would have to um, yeah, make a one hour version. But well, I will leave a few links in the video description and um, these links will help you to design, understand and build a proper BTTC. So I hope you guys liked the video. Obviously it wasn't such a detailed video, but like I said, it would take more than an hour to explain BTTC in extreme detail and talk about everything. So.